Hello everyone, Melanie here with CGL Recruiting. And today on My Job Seekers, we're gonna be talking about five ways that you can help out one of your fellow job seekers. We are truly all in this together. And if we all take a moment to help each other through it, it will go that much quicker and easier for all of us. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, I would appreciate it if you consider subscribing to our channel. Ring that bell for notifications. And if you feel that this information is helpful, give us that thumbs up. Let's get started with our first way you can help. Now, when I say give someone a recommendation, I of course am talking about things like on LinkedIn, where you can actually give somebody a recommendation for their skills and experience that you actually have observed and that you can endorse them for skills. But I mean much more than that. As people are going through their job search, you're going to be at different job fairs with individuals and you're going to be seeing people's posts on LinkedIn and other sites. And you can give someone a recommendation more than just that formalized recommendation letter. And that is strictly just giving them some extra positive praise when they've done something. Perhaps they are going outside the box and trying to post an article or a LinkedIn update that talks about a certain issue. It's very easy for you as a fellow job seeker to go into that and do a comment and give them a like or even share the information that they're trying to do. So you help their information and what they're trying to do go further by you recommending it. Now I know you're spending a lot of time looking for jobs on your own and chances are there's lots of positions that you're coming across that are not a match for you but are a great match for one of your fellow job seekers. Here's what I recommend you do. If you can take the time to find five people that are in jobs that are different but somehow related to you and keep that list of five people somewhere close to your computer Maybe you have one in accounting and one in IT and one in HR and one in engineering, whatever. And as you are coming across different positions that are not a match to you, take the time to send that position to somebody else if you know it might be a better match for them. Now, most of the job posting systems nowadays have a way to do this where they you can easily email it to somebody else. And on other systems like LinkedIn, you can actually tag a person to it by doing that little at symbol in their name if you're connected and that way it will tag them to that role so they don't miss it and have a chance to do it. Think about this from your side. If you were a job seeker, wouldn't you like to know that you had five other people working to send you job leads? It's a great way that you can help a job seeker see so much more out of all the information that we see every day that's targeted to their individual job search. For those of you that have been watching our videos for a while, you know that I always say the best way to find a job is through someone you know. And I don't think any HR person anywhere will tell you different. But listen, it can be hard to build your network, especially in an age of social distancing where there aren't as many face-to-face -face networking events. So how do we continue to do this? Well, we have to do it through online platforms. And for some people that were nervous before doing this in a face-to-face -face setting, it's even harder when you're trying to do this over a computer and you're worried about uh, all the technical aspects of it. So there's a great way that you can help somebody increase their network. And that's very simply by when you're having a conversation in one of these things with a small group and somebody you know new comes on, help introduce them to the rest of the group. Now, if we were doing this in person, which it, hopefully things are gonna be start opening up again for everybody soon, this is you know like your wing person, where two of you are going into a networking event together. And sometimes if one person is having a little bit more of an introverted moment, it's easier for the other person to say, hey, have you met so-and-so? Let me tell you a little bit about them or invite that person, hey, you know, John, can you tell them a little bit about you? and you're giving that person an opening and you're helping them build their network. It's definitely there gonna be certain situations that are more comfortable for some than for others. And so anything that you can do to help a fellow job seeker build their network is a great thing. 
and hopefully they're grateful and thankful and they will return the favor to you. Okay, for this one, you may notice that I said, give them someone to practice with, not someone that you're just gonna be throwing feedback at somebody constantly. The job search process is hard. And don't get me wrong, we all need feedback from one another, but there's times that we just need somebody to practice with. And what do I mean practicing on? Your elevator pitch. If you don't have one yet, you absolutely need an elevator pitch. You need to feel comfortable saying that elevator pitch when you meet to people. And it's one thing to say it to your mirror, it's another thing to actually have a live person that you're saying it to. And so be that person that you help somebody practice with. Let's also move on to the interview phase. It's very, very nerve wracking when you've applied for 200 jobs and then finally you have an interview and you feel like so much weight is on that one interview. Wouldn't it be great to have somebody who does an interview for you in advance and you can have a chance to get some of those jitters out? Be that person for somebody else. Find somebody who you respect and admire that is also job seeking and ask them, hey, would you uh, wanna do mock interviews back and forth? You know, I'll ask you 10 questions and you answered me and let's do it vice versa and we can both get some chance to practice our answers. Now, this is not a session where you pick apart the other person. It's okay to give feedback to individuals, but you need to be really careful of the feedback you give. And the reason for that is you're seeing your job search through a certain lens and you know yourself best and you know what's gonna work best for your job search. That may not be the best path for somebody else with where they are in their job search. The way you go about looking for a job as somebody in the C-suite and somebody who's looking for an internship is very different. The way you go after a job that you're going for a large public company as opposed to a small private equity firm is also very different. So I'm not saying that you just take everything that you think is absolutely perfect and give it to this person and try to get them to adjust. But this is a chance for you as if you were the hiring manager in a company. And when they answer, give them feedback on, well, your pace was a little fast for me, or you seemed like um, this project you started giving me data about, that was very interesting to me. I think you should tell more about that when you're doing an interview. It's that kind of feedback that's gonna be best, but most of all, it's the practice. You know, and while I'm on here talking about feedback and such, I do wanna say there are a lot of people saying that they're career coaches right now. And there is a lot of people of giving guidance to all of you as job seekers. And, and I'm one of them, I guess, with all these videos. But here's what I would say to that is, you are gonna know what's gonna work best for you. Take the advice that you do think works best, but make sure the advice you're getting is from somebody who has a background in doing this. Um, either an HR person or someone, if it's, you know, on interviewing someone that's done a lot of interviews, somebody who's, you know, recruited a lot of individuals, and then make them tell you not just, you know, what is their advice, but why they think that way. Because you need to understand the rationale, you know, you need to understand so you can make the best choice for you and your specific situation of what is the best move forward. And also because when you're in this job search, things are going to change constantly, right? And so you need to be able to have strategies that you can build that you can adjust on the fly. And the only way you're able to do that is if you understand what the strategy is built on. So sorry, a little bit of an offshoot there, but let's make sure too that when you are taking advice, you do get that information of why it is one way or another. The last thing you can do for a fellow job seeker is give them a call. I don't mean an email, I mean a call. This is very difficult times for many people in their job search. We're all gonna have highs and we're all gonna have lows and we're all gonna have to rely on each other to get through this together. Sometimes when you've been sitting behind your computer, you know how difficult it is to be looking again at something else and you just need to talk with someone. You don't have to fix their world. That's not the intention of this call. 
the intention of this call is to be there and be present for them. And when they forget that they are worthy and they have great skills and experience and that the right role is out there for them, you get the chance to remind them of all that. Now, again, I'm not saying that it's you should always be that positive cheerleader and not acknowledge that people do have times where it's okay to be down and it's okay to need a moment to take that breath. You still want to be there for them in those times as much as you do in the other times. I hope this video is helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them down below. I do read each and every one. Thank you and I'll see you next time.